Okay, Kitty, now this is the game. We're going to play fetch. I'm going to bounce the ball, and you're going to go get it, okay? Bad Kitty. Oh, bit me. Hey, Joe Alton, MD here, that old Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over a thousand articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness. The great outdoors is, well, pretty great, but there's always a risk of coming face-to-face -face with one of its residents. Most of these encounters are going to be benign, but in some circumstances, you might not be so lucky. Let's face it, if it's got a mouth, it can probably bite you, whether it's a fire ant, a polar bear, or your senile old Uncle Fred. In this video, we're going to talk about bites from the critters you might consider cute, the ones with the nice soft fur. These may live in the woods or right in your own home. The average person's life is spent in close proximity to dogs and cats and other mammals, so it pays to know about animal bites as well as their treatment and prevention. Bites from mammals number in the millions annually and account for about 1% of all ER visits. 90% of these wounds are inflicted, often upon children, by dogs and cats. Deaths from animal bites are rare, thank goodness, but bleeding, nerve and tissue damage, crush injuries, infection, and pain, very common, not to mention psychological trauma, especially if you're very young. Every year, tens of thousands of bite victims are required surgical repairs in the United States. Let's talk a little bit about dog bites. Mark Twain once said, the more I learn about people, the more I like my dog. Well, you might agree with that, but dogs do bite. Dog bites account for 80 to 90 percent of all injuries caused by animals. Although an attack from a wolf or a coyote will make the news, most incidents occur from contact with someone's pet or on or near the victim's property. About 30 dog attacks, mostly from non-neutered male dogs, turn fatal every year. Pit bulls, Rottweilers, Dobermans, German Shepherds, and Huskies are some of the breeds most likely to cause significant bite injuries. Their victims, again, are commonly young children. Dogs and other canines have 42 teeth as adults. These are designed to rip, shred, and tear flesh. As a result, some of the more severe canine bite wounds may have gaping lacerations, sometimes with flesh actually torn off. Swelling from the pressure of the bite or infection is also a common consequence. Dog bites are more common than wolves or coyote bites by a long stretch, but they are similar. The wolf and the coyote may appear similar too, but the size and strength of the coyote can't compare to that of a gray wolf, and the same can be said of their bite. Wolf bites exert about twice the pressure of a German Shepherd bite. Think about it. Their bite's so powerful it can chew through the femurs of large animals like elk and moose in their native habitat. Coyotes, on the other hand, have a bite similar to a medium-sized dog. For various reasons, wolves haven't adapted as well to encroaching civilization as the coyote, which has actually increased its range over the decades. You're much more likely to run afoul of a coyote in your suburban neighborhood. Contrary to the opinions of some, wolves and coyotes will attack humans if the opportunity arises. The most recent fatal attacks actually occurred this century. A young man in Saskatchewan, Canada was killed in 2005 by healthy wolves that had become accustomed to people. In 2010, a young woman died while jogging in Alaska, also killed by wolves. In 2009, another young woman was killed, this time by coyotes, in Canada. Foxes are technically also canines, but belong to a different category. Instead of the genus Canis, they belong to the genus Vulpus. Their bites can cause minor injuries, but are more, more concerned due to the fact that they're one of the wildlife species that carry rabies. How about cat bites? Cat bites represent about 5 to 15 percent of all animal bites incurred by humans, although many cases aren't reported because of the small size of the injury. The most aggressive breeds are usually hybrids with genetics that come from wild cats, like Bengals. Even if the amount of trauma is small, puncture wounds by cat teeth can be deep and are more likely to cause infection than dog bites. Infections occur in about 10 to 15 percent of dog bites, but close to 50 percent of cat bites. One reason might be the depth of the wound. Not only is it difficult to clean the site, but the needle-like teeth push bacteria deep into flesh, tendons, and joints. Many organisms find that environment pretty favorable, and they multiply, causing swelling, redness, and pain. 
In addition to their 30 teeth, domestic cats also use their claws in attack or defense, causing scratch injuries that can lead to infection with a bacteria, especially one called Bartonella, also known as cat scratch fever. There are also wild cats. Large wild cats like mountain lions, attacks by them are pretty rare, but fatalities occurred in 2018 in Oregon and Washington. Injuries include lacerations, broken bones, and crush damage. Smaller wild cats like bobcats and lynxes, if they're healthy, they're pretty shy. They avoid contact with humans, but they can also inflict deep bites. And unlike domestic cats that'll scratch you, they'll give you deep claw wounds as well. Next time, we're going to talk about how to treat dog and cat bites, as well as how to deal with other kinds of animals and the wounds that they can inflict. More importantly, we're going to begin a discussion of the serious infections they can transmit to humans, things like rabies and tetanus and others. This is Joe Altnendi wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Begin your journey to medical preparedness with the Survival Medicine Handbook, the essential guide for when medical help is not on the way. Now in its 700 page third edition, plus our new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings. And last but not least, by checking out Nurse Amy's medical kits and individual supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.